Hello everybody, I'm Dave. Welcome back to Sailing Madness. As you can see, North Wales is disappearing in the distance behind us because we're going on another little trip. And I say us because look who's back. The main man has returned. Hello. Lots of people have been asking where you've been, Robin. So come on, spill the beans. Uh, Why I... have you not been on the boat with me recently? Well, because y you offered me sailing in North Wales. <laughs> and somebody else offered me sailing in the Algarve. So uh, <laughs> I've been mostly sailing the Algarve. And then you said, come back, because it's summertime in the UK and we're gonna go up to beautiful Scotland in the summer. Yep. It's good to be back, it's good to be back. And uh, sea state's a little bit bigger than we expected. The wind's, uh, the wind's fairly strong, but we are, uh, we're sailing nicely, aren't we? So you're coming along for the ride? Let's see how we get on on our first trip on our journey to Scotland. Heading to the Isle of Man, let's see what time we get there. It's a miserable crossing so far. Robin wishes he was still back in Portugal. And I wish I was still in my bed. We got up at half past five this morning and we've had 20 knots of breeze, we're close hauled, only just managed to stay on course, the seas are quite choppy, but we're doing about seven knots through the water, so we are getting there, it's just not very comfortable. Well our miserable passage continues, I've just been seasick for the first time ever, for all these years I've been bragging that I never get seasick but I have been now. <laughs> Robin's feeling a little bit woozy. It's grim. It's grim, isn't it? It's just grim. It's wet, it's windy. The sea's choppy, it's right on our beam. And just to add to the confusion, we've got an AIS target that's less than a mile away from us. Big old tanker, we can't even see it. It's out there somewhere. So is the other man but I can't wait to get to Port St Mary. And for once in my life, I don't even fancy a Guinness tonight. I just want me bed. <laughs> Look how we suffer. Look how we suffer for these, for the art, the art of these videos. That's what it is. Sat on your sofa, having your tea, watching us suffer, giggling to yourselves. Do you know, we've been going 11 hours now and we've still got about <laughs> two hours to go according to this. How many miles is it? About five miles to go. It's five miles and we've got two hours to go because there's 22 knots of wind blowing directly at us. Right on the nose. Right on the nose, exactly where we want to go. I bet you wish you stayed in Portugal now, don't you? <laughs> well, it feels like a long time ago, Portugal. <laughs> feels like a long time ago. This is sailing, jeez. So, well, we're motoring at the moment, to be fair. We have sailed a long way today, we've done very well. Yeah, so we have. literally got to five or six miles off and uh, had to stop sailing. So, we, we, were, we were booming along at eight, eight knots at one point, yeah. seven knots. Um, we should have been in by now, but this last bit with the wind towards us has just been a killer. And finally, after what felt like a lifetime, we made it into Port St Mary on the Isle of Man. But with 30 knot gusts blowing in the harbour, picking up a mooring board proved to be very difficult, especially when my boy catcher pole broke again. Oh, fuck's sake. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck's sake. No. Anchor. Hey. There's loads of room here, why don't we just anchor? Well, if you, if you What's the depth? We're in. Oh, we're going sideways. Got it. We're in 3. Point, uh, we're in 6.8 meters. Let's just anchor here. Hey. Let's just anchor here. You yeah. Well, we're not going to. The pole's fucked. Okay. Let it down! Oh. 
Yeah, look at that, 20 metres. What's our depth? I'll let a bit more out, to be honest. Yeah, I'm going to, I just want to get the uh, drop. Backwards, if you uh, that's, that's it. I just felt the end of the pool, then so just go and drop up a little bit more so it's flat on the floor, yeah. Yeah, Right, well we've been here a couple of hours, we've had something to eat, it's still blowing an absolute hooli. It's blowing 30 knots here inside the anchorage and uh, we've already uh, dragged anchor once. So I don't think we're going to be getting much sleep tonight. Here we go then, it's day two. The winds have died down. And once again we're up early to get through Calf Sound. We've got to go through around 6.45 and it's, uh, it's just before 6 o'clock now. Right, made a cup of tea before we up the anchor, so let's go and have a cup of tea and head round to Calf Sound. Plan today is to get to Stranra. Did you get some sleep last night? I got lots of sleep. No, uh, I was up at midnight to check the anchor, I was up at 2am to check the anchor and then and it was blowing a hooli at 2am but then it did start to calm down so then we got some sleep and then Dave got me up at six he's a wonderful man I love him <laughs> I was dead to the world I didn't even hear um I didn't hear Robin getting up <laughs> <laughs> that's because that's because you were snoring yeah but I was. you were you were Zonko <laughs> Zonko we could have we could have gone anywhere <laughs> you could have done it the boat could have ended up anywhere I'd been on the wiser till this morning well at least we experienced it just pulling a bit didn't we for a while and having to yeah resort it out so uh, it was very very windy yeah very windy yeah. horrible day yesterday but it looks like it's gonna be a better day today probably too good not enough wind later on we'll see right so we've been going about 15 20 minutes and we are just about to make a starboard turn into the calf sound and I can see a little bit of sunshine ahead so that's good news and you can tell it's a happier boat today because already in the first 20 minutes we've had more conversation than what we had in the whole of yesterday. Because yesterday, in those awful conditions, we were sitting on either side of the boat, not saying a word to each other, both just sitting there feeling very sorry for ourselves. But already there's a better atmosphere on the boat. <laughs> it's amazing what nice sailing conditions can do. And how do we know we can go through Calf Sound? Ah, right, okay. Robin, as always, has uh, done the research 
and um, we can go through at high water Liverpool minus one hour and 45 minutes. Is that right? That's when the tide, the flow changes to the north, so we can uh, we can start to head north on that. There's still some pressure against us from the, the winds coming against us today. Blowing straight through Calf Sound. So we're pushing out into the Irish Sea against the wind. You wouldn't really want to come through here against the tide, certainly in a sailing boat. As you can hear, the engine is on. It's a lovely sunny day. We are slowly but surely making our way to Stranra. Well, we're going to go to Loch Ryan. Not deciding yet whether we're going to go to Stranra, but we might just drop the hook halfway down the lock like we did last time. It looks like the Algarve. Yeah, it does. It's lovely. It doesn't quite feel like the Algarve, does it? It's, well, it's getting there compared to yesterday. How it many was, layers have we got on? Uh, uh, <laughs> three. <laughs> but you will be able to hear that the motor's on. Yeah, no so wind. We there's a big wind hole today in the middle of the day most of the day unfortunately so we we sail well to start with but now uh, unfortunately we are in motor mode but because we're in get there mode <laughs> as in this is just this is just the transition this is to scotland so um we just need to get there by hook or by crook and then we can yep. do sailing up there can't we yep that's right so um I, i'm not sure we mentioned this before but uh we are under a little bit of a time constraint to get the boat to Scotland. Then we both get in the train home, leaving the boat in Scotland, and then coming back for a, a proper tour around the Isles uh, in about three weeks' time. Yeah. Two and a half, three weeks. Yeah. So the boat's going to be left in the marina uh, for that time whilst we're at home. But we will be back to do some proper sailing, and hopefully by then, summer in the UK would definitely have arrived. Yeah. But you probably know that by now. Yes. You you know that we didn't receive a summer, that it was that it was blowing a hooli. You're shouting at the screen now saying, Turn back, lads! It was the worst Scottish <laughs> summer ever! What are you Turn doing? Turn back! Turn back! Don't leave your boat up there! Robin, go back to Portugal! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, well we haven't done much filming for the last couple of hours because the engine's been on and it's been a bit dull. But we've had a change of plan. Now you don't often hear about that in sailing, do you? But um, Robin's come up with a master plan. I'll let you explain oh, it. Oh, don't blame, don't blame me. <laughs> okay, so uh, we were trying to get to Rue Marina in, in, on the Clyde, basically. Um, this week. But this week, Wednesday afternoon, we're, we're now on a Tuesday evening Wednesday afternoon is pretty rubbish weather, quite windy. Uh, Thursday is very windy, uh, too windy uh, by far. And that means that we were gonna go into Stramra tonight, which I think we told you earlier. Um, we know from experience, it takes a while to get around this headland at the top of Scotland that we're at at the moment. It's not the top of Scotland, but go, going round into, uh, what is it? The Clyde. Lot Ryan. Lot Ryan oh, yeah, oh, to oh, get oh, round right, to yeah, Lot yeah, Ryan, yeah. just because the tide's against you. So, um, or it is at the point that we have to get here, unfortunately. So, um, we wouldn't be in Stranraer till eleven o'clock, maybe ten o'clock tonight. It's uh, the middle of the summer, even though it doesn't feel like it. The darkness will only be here for about four or five hours. So, we've decided to carry on and go through the night because the weather conditions overnight, wind-wise, once we get out of this wind hole, are favourable and we can sail our way past Arran overnight and then up the Clyde in the light tomorrow morning and hopefully into Rue Marina by... Between 10 and midday, shall we say? Oh, that's at least you're giving yourself a big, big winning window there. <laughs> I'd like to say we were in at 10. Okay. Uh, because we sail well overnight, but we'll see. But realistically, yeah, worst case, it should be 12 o'clock. So it's uh, the start of our night passage. 
uh, we've made a plan um, and uh, the plan is uh, that Dave is having a kit from 10 till 2 a.m. It's about something like 11.15, 11.30 I think now. We've still got a little bit of light. We're making our way past, uh, we've passed the Arza Craig and we're in the channel now between um, Aaron and Arza Craig. And the wind's due to get up so you might hear that. Got a little bit of motor on just to keep us going at the speed we need. Uh, but we've got the head sail up and it's filling now nicely. The wind's been a bit all over the place but it is now going to come in from our port side and uh, that should take us along nicely and it's going to get up to about 20 knots which is only about 11 at the moment. And then at 2am I'm going to wake Dave up and say that's it mate, that's all the sleep you're getting and then it's time for you to take over. So we've got one thing to look out for which is a ship that I've seen that's on its way down here. Um, I managed to spot that on marine traffic so I know to look out for it. I'm sure they'll be looking out for us because uh, there's not much about tonight um, and there's a few fishing boats about as well. Well good morning everybody and welcome to the Firth of Clyde. We've made it, we're in Scotland and it's just getting light. It's just gone four o'clock in the morning and I'm halfway through my half of the night shift. Robin did the first half, he did from 10 till 2 and I'm doing 2 till 6. So I've got the, uh, the pleasure of watching the sunrise, even though it's not going to be a particularly pleasant sunrise because it's all rather cloudy and wet this morning. But we've been making good progress overnight, hadn't had enough winds to sail. Uh, we're doing a bit of motor sailing because there's only been about 10 knots of breeze behind us so we're just uh, motor sailing on the head sail for now. But uh, we made good progress. We've got a little island ahead of us on our starboard side called Little Cumbry, I think that's how you pronounce it. Over on the port side you can just see Butte and over on our port quarter we've just about passed the top end of the Isle of Arran. So according to the charts we've got about another five hours to go and we'll be in Rue Marina. Can't wait to get there, have a shower and have a sleep. It's been a great overnight really enjoyed it. Well we have just about made it to Rue. We've done over 24 hours. Our last port of call was Port, port St Mary on the Isle of Man and here we are about a mile or so off Rue Marina and I'm just going to check here because uh, we have done 120.9 nautical miles in the last 24 hours. It's not bad is it? In a day? Just over a day? Night sail was good. I had the easy shift, Robin had to deal with some rather large ships heading his way, whereas all I had to deal with was no wind. And so after a 26 hour passage we made it to Rue Marina. What time is it? Uh, o'clock. And it was only a short walk from the marina to the nearest pub. Right, that is Operation Get the Boat to Scotland done. Had a good few pints of Guinness and a lovely meal in the pub last night. Have to admit, got a bit of a sore head this morning. Now, Robin has left the boat, he's on the train heading home, and I'm going to be doing exactly the same in the next couple of days. Got some boat jobs to do that I want to get done first. But we've both got commitments that we need to be home for, which is why we were up against the time to get the boat up here to Scotland. Now, the plan is, in about 10 days, I'm coming back with my wife, Sarah. We're going to do a bit of sailing around the Clyde area. And then when my wife goes home, Robin is coming back, and then we're probably going to go a little bit further afield this time. So watch this space for more details on our 2024 sailing plans here in Scotland. Now you may be wondering why we chose to leave the boat here at Rue Marina. Now for us that's a no-brainer. Because I'm a berth holder at Conway Marina, which is a boat folk marina, Rue Marina is also a boat folk marina and part of the deal you get as a berth holder with boat folk is you get the opportunity to go and visit all the other marinas in the group and you can stay at every other marina for 30 days for free. That's not 30 days in total, that's 30 days at every other marina. So I've got the boat here for free now for 30 days. That's why it was a no-brainer to leave the boat here. And of course on the way back if I wanted to go and visit maybe Banger Marina 
I could leave the boat there again for another 30 days for free. So it's a great deal that boat folk give their berth holders and I don't know of any similar generous deal like that you get from any other marina company. So well done boat folk, we'll take that every time. So that just about does it for day for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you have enjoyed this episode, share the love, hit that thumb, give us a like. Any comments or questions, put them in the box below. I do enjoy reading all your comments and answering all your questions. Remember, if you're not done so already, become a subscriber, hit that notification bell so you get notified next time we release a video as we continue our 2024 Scottish adventure. From me and Robin, take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.